it going? Welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm going to be showing you a little bit of some fun film stuff that I've been doing. I just wanted to introduce you a little bit to this camera first. This is the Minolta Dynax 5. It is um, a camera from 2001, I believe. So it was around about the time that digital um, SLRs were coming more into the game. People started switching more to digital for portraits and for their photography um, careers. But yeah, this camera has been in my family for a while and I want to um, just talk a little bit about it. Um, it's basically my baby. It's my favorite camera to use. I'm actually just going to show you guys some examples in this video of um, the different settings that I've used it in before. We have um, a summer camp where I took some amazing photos at sundown on Kodak Gold. I have been experimenting with expired black and white film. I think I even still have some film, so I should probably start shooting with the last bits of that expired film. Um, this camera is awesome. I mean, it's just basically your standard SLR, but it's really cool. Um, Sony bought Minolta a while ago. I don't know exactly when, but they bought Minolta a long time ago and um, this is just your standard, I mean, it's not a standard kit lens in the sense that most days these kit lenses, they arrive and they're like 18 to 55 millimeters. This one is actually 100 um, to 28. So it gives a nice wide angle. I'm sure I can find a shot to put in here now. It gives a nice wide angle and um, you can also do portraits at 50 and you can also go right in to 100. I was trying to show you guys what I mean, but obviously you can't see through here. Um, but it goes right through to 100, which is basically um, low-key telephoto. Like, it's real zoom. Like, I could just spy on my neighbours right now, which I'm not going to do, obviously. But, um, yeah, and it's just nice because it's it's got an automatic mode that just works. It just really works. So, um, I tend to just shoot on program auto. So... Currently I'm on ISO up here, um, which means I can change the ISO, although one of the basics of film photography is that depending on what film you've got in your camera, that is the ISO that you're using. It's not about, you can't change it like on a like on the digital, you can't change the ISO from one stop to the next. You actually have to have a different film in the camera. Um, that's something that I actually completely failed in my old, in, my, in another camera. I'm going to show you this camera real quick. It's collecting dust. So this is the Practica uh, Super TL TL 1000, made in the DDR, and um, so in the old German Democratic Republic. So it's old. So when I'm walking out with this camera, old men will be like, "Oh my goodness, these still exist!" <laughs> and this is completely analog. So this one actually, I have to figure out the um, the distance of the of the f-stop and everything here and i have to focus it here and because it's completely analog it means that when i look into the viewfinder it actually doesn't um do any kind of autofocus for you so this is like a typical old camera where when you look through look through the viewfinder here thing here little circle do you see that circle that circle there is basically got to be lined up with each other the top circle and the bottom circle have got to be lined up otherwise it's not in focus so that was a lesson i learned pretty early on <laughs> other lesson was that i couldn't change the iso or the aperture on here too much otherwise it would be completely overexposed right because the iso is always the same on film and i ruined all my birthday shots on this camera last year because i had Aperture 2.8, which lets in so much light. And I was in just thinking in my head, oh yeah, aperture 2.8 means that everything's gonna have a nice bokeh, everything's gonna be nice and unfocused in the background, but lo and behold, the pictures turned out like this. <laughs> they were completely just bright and overexposed because I was using a 400 film and um, had an open aperture. So ISO 400 was too much for outdoors plus f-stop 2.8 right so it let in way too much light and I completely botched that film which was a bit sad because I was really excited about this film on this camera 
Putting this baby aside for a second, I love it, but I don't use it very often for that particular reason, because I've just been trying to master the Minolta. And there are a few things that I haven't learned yet, but there are also some things I'm getting used to. So one thing that I've really enjoyed with this camera is that sun rays just look so beautiful. Um, something really cool about this camera. Then we have the flash, which is fantastic. Um, I'm gonna put in some more pictures here of birthdays and parties and um, just, you know, obviously when you're shooting in low lighting, this direct flash on the camera just brings a amazing, amazing color to the, the pictures and helps expose dark scenarios. There's obviously manual and autofocus, which is great. Sometimes I have to use manual because my auto doesn't work. And it has all these different functions here. So you have program auto, you have sports mode, different things. So I think those, those I don't tend to use them that much. I tend to just stick to program auto. The batteries in this camera last forever. I think I've changed the battery twice since I moved to Berlin and it's been six years. Oh, these little CR2 batteries. Now I'm going to show you how to insert the film into the camera, which is also helpful for anyone who doesn't know in general how to insert film into a film camera. So pay attention kids. So depending on where the little thing is here, you put the film in with the corresponding bit right here. So it fits, it pretty much only fits in one direction, depending on which way your camera is. And then what we have here is, I don't know if you can see this, but there's like a little, when you turn this bit, <laughs> it's not turning. Okay, you see this here, right here. This is, the bit that you want the film to catch onto and then you turn it and then it, the film takes it with it and then you carefully close and it should look like this which means that your film is in and you're ready to shoot so now i just want to kind of show you a little bit of the shots that i've been doing and i really hope to be seeing you more with this camera and obviously, if you need me for your wedding or whatever else it might be, don't hesitate to contact me on my website, um, christinawatkinsphotos.com. And I'm super excited just to be on this uh, little photography film journey on YouTube with you guys. Um, yeah. And let me know what kind of videos you also want to see, where it, whether it's about digital photography, film photography. I hope I can help you and um, give you some little nuggets of wisdom things that I've learned over the last 10 years of photography. So thanks for tuning in and